Now we are going for chronic multiple ulcers. So we, there are two types of chronic multiple ulcers, means there are more than one ulcers, not single lesions, multiple lesions of oral cavity, chronic pemphigus vulgaris and mucous membrane pemphigoid. There are many here, chronic ulcers, single ulcers, chronic ulcers causing multiple ulcers. Among these, we are, we are targeting here, pemphigus vulgaris and mucous membrane pemphigoid. These are for our, for this syllabus, these are more than enough. A lot of people studying stomatology as a medical student, they follow usually these two. Okay, next, the first one we are going with is pemphigus vulgaris. On the right side, you can see vaccinator, internal mucous membrane, mucous membrane, mucous membrane. So why not this is mucous membrane pemphigoid? Why not? Okay, let's see usually presents four months before cutaneous lesions. So before the appearance of the lesions on the skin, four months before of that, these oral lesions are present. That's why we are targeting oral lesions, stomatology, oral cavity, chronic, multiple oral ulcers. What are the clinical manifestations? So you have seen the atelized form. It means the progression of the lesion in this disease. Classical bulla on uninflamed area. Uninflamed means there will be no redness, no swelling, no pain. Then rapidly breaks, leaving irregular erosions. So what do we have here? We have some classical bulla of uninflamed area. Then rapidly breaks, leaving irregular erosions and ulcers that extend periphery. So classical bulla uninflamed area rapidly breaks into irregular erosions and then they extend periphery. From the center, they extend periphery. Okay. Leaves denuded area, eroded area. There will be erosion. Central erosion, peripheral extension. Central erosion, peripheral extension. Okay. Its chronic appearance differentiate it from Herpes simplex, varicella zoster, and erythema multiforme. So what is the only thing? This can also be on the vaccinator area, EM, vaccinator on the cheek, internal mucosa. This can also be one of the oral manifestation because yellow and shallow ulcer of the chicken pox in the oral cavity, herpes simplex, anterior cavity, anterior oral cavity, it can also be like a herpes simplex involving interior cavity, resolus zoster, yellow, yellow and shallow, and EM as seen on the vaccinator internal mucous membrane. But how it is different, the only way is to know by the chronic appearance, chronic city, chronicity. More, it takes more time to develop, not one or two days or two or three days. We have prodrome and then we have lesion. We have prodrome, we have rash. No, it takes more time. And even after this, four months after these oral lesions, there will be skin lesions, retaining lesions. Pemphigus vulgaris, vulgar. This is vulgar, takes time. Pemphigus, perfect. Okay, let's go next. Mucous membrane pemphigoid. Mucous membrane of the oral cavity, you can see here, especially. And you see, not only marginal, but the whole gingiva is involved. Not only marginal. You see, the margin are not spared. The whole gingiva is, is inflamed, gingivitis. So these primitive gingivitis, vesicles that rupture, leaving erosions. So we have first the age over 50. So these mucous membrane pemphigoid is present in the elder people, usually age over 50, after 50, mainly mucosal surface of the oral cavity. That's why mucous membrane, mucosal surface, mucous membrane. Then we have these comative gingivitis. We have vesicles, you see, atelialized form. Atelialized form means progression of the lesions in this mucous membrane. 
So the vesicles that rupture, leaving erosions that spread peripherally, same as pemphigus vulgaris, more slowly and self-limited than pemphigus. So how to compare is, this is more slower peripheral extension and it is self-limited. It's not extending, extending like pemph pemphigus vulgaris. It's self-limited, limited to the gingivitis, and then slow. And then we have a positive Nikolsky sign. What is Nikolsky sign? Nikolsky sign is a skin finding in which top layers of the skin slip away from the lower layers when rubbed. So you, you have a cutaneous lesion, you, you rub it with your finger, the top layers of the skin separates or slips away from the lower layers. This is known as positive Nikolsky sign and is found in many of the lesions. One of the lesions or one of the disease is mucous membrane. One of the pathologies is mucous membrane pemphigoid, where oral manifestation is over usually over 50 and cause these comative gingivitis, slow peripheral extension. Slow extension, peripheral extension, but slow extension, and then Pemphigus vulgaris and positive Nikolsky sign. What is Nikolsky sign? Here it is written. Okay. So these, these are some of the differential diagnosis of some oral lesions, if you are interested. Here we have pem Pemphigus vulgaris. Excuse me. Pemphigus vulgaris and mucous membrane pemphigoid. This is this is the differential diagnosis, the clinical characteristic, histological features, Zang cells in the pemphigus vulgaris, in the cutaneous manifestation, antibodies, autoantibodies, and immunofluorescence test. Differentiated. Okay. So now this is the difference for those who are interested. Pemphigus vulgaris. Mucous membrane pemphigoid. More towards the discriminative gingivitis, but also goes here slower than pemphigus vulgaris, whereas both are chronic in nature. Chronic mouth ulcers. Okay. The detail in the previous slides, the, the, the detail we studied, we studied here was more than enough. If you want to remember, you can just have a look at these, compare them, then you, you can. Remember them. Now the third part of oral ulcers, basically after multiple ulcers, we have recurrent oral ulcers. So multiple ulcers, they were acute and chronic. And now we have recurrent oral ulcers. In recurrent oral ulcers, we will study three. Recurrent apathous ulcers, excuse me. We will study recurrent apathous ulcers. Peshis disease and recurrent herpes simplex. Okay, recurrent abscess ulcers, stomatitis, also known as abscess ulcers. Okay, let's start with the first one. So we have abscess ulcers, peshis disease, and recurrent herpes simplex. Abscess ulcers. What are abscess ulcers? The cause is idiopathic, not well understood, may be immune mediated. So one of the theory is cell mediated immunity occurs in the oral mucosa which leads to the increase of T cells, chemokines, and macrophages, releasing intrafron gamma and tumor necrosis factor alpha, leading to these aphthous ulcer. What are background? These are known as canker sores. Canker sores. Small, painful ulcers, idiopathic, just will appear on your lips or oral cavity, internal lips and form a non keratinized oral mucosa. All of us once in a lifetime must have experienced oral ulcers, idiopathic, usually aphthous ulcer. Inner lip, where are they found? They are found in inner lips, cheeks, soft palate, floor of mouth, gingiva and tongue, or gingiva. Affects 20% of population. So if we are 100, at least 20, right? If we are 80, 
maybe more than 25% or 25 students have experienced this. So 20% of the population experience this. Okay, then we have sign and symptoms. What are sign and symptoms? These are pinpoint papule gradually expands well circumscribed round oval yellow gray pseudomonas pseudomembranous center inflammatory red halo so how to remember is actually they are excuse me very most, okay let me show you how so what happens is we have an erythematous margin and yellow Okay, so this looks like an aptus ulcer, centrally more yellow, have the matus margin, red margin, and then we have some eroded vessels. Okay, so we have aptus ulcer. Perfect. So what these are known as canker sores. They are small, painful, round, well circumscribed, oval yellow gray center, pseudomembranous center red halo means the surrounding area is red red halo yeah red shadow red periphery types we have minor we have major we have herpetiform minor is less than one centimeter major is two to three centimeter herpetiform means multiple small multiple small and if you see they have zoomed one of it shown the multiple so one of these looks like the small ones, but they are small in, they are smaller than minor, but they are multiple in number, herpetiform. If they are one and less than one centimeter, or if there are two or three separately present, less than one centimeter, minor. If one is bigger, major aptus ulcer, minus aptus ulcer, major aptus. Herpetiform means small, multiple like clusters making a cluster causes weakened immune system as here we say it is idiopathic and then one of the theory is cell mediated and this was the patho idiopathogenesis certain foods can initiate increased stress can cause aptus ulcer nutritional deficiency can cause aptus ulcer treatment we have stress many stress you think certain foods can cause aptus ulcers you recognize the food which causes you aptus ulcer, and then you get a healthy diet. Avoid that food. And then you take care of the oral hygiene so that you don't have a weakened immune system. Perfect. We try to remember as much of the aptus ulcer we can. Now we go towards the recurrent type of the aptus ulcer, which comes again and again. Recurrent aptus ulcer or recurrent aptus stomatitis mostly begins during the second decade. Second decade of the age. 11 to 20. Prodrome, we have prodrome. Prodrome from two to 48 hours before an ulcer appears burning sensation. So what happens is we have a prodrome and prodrome is from two to 48 hours. Okay, prodrome is from two to 48 hours before an ulcer appears and causes and causes a burning sensation. So this is one of the abscess ulcer here on the right side. And then it can form an ulcer. That's why we are studying under ulcer, oral ulcer. It can form an ulcer. And if it is recurrent coming back again and again, then it becomes recurrent oral ulcer. There will be localized arrhythmia. Arrhythmia means redness. Localized means around this periphery. Localized arrhythmia, then small white papule, which finally ulcerate. So there will be localized arrhythmia. Then a small white papule will appear, a swelling, a papule more than elevated above the skin. And then finally, there will be ulcer. That's why aptus ulcer. And then there will be ulcer. You will have a burning sensation. Whatever you eat, 
you have you have spicy thing you have oily thing it will stick to that also and cause you a burning sensation a disturbance not preceded by vesicles so these papules will not become vesicles because they will not contain fluid they will not retain fluid they are uniform almost well circumscribed round uniform rounded painful covered by a yellowish membrane when this yellowish membrane rupture they will form an ulcer known as aphthous ulcer and if it is recurrent coming back again and again recurrent aphthous ulcer this almost like 1 cm if it is around 1 cm or less than 1 cm minor aphthous ulcer more than 1 cm like 2 to 3 cm major aphthous ulcer no tissue remnants or borders there are no tissue remnants borders it's uniform it's well rounded covered by yellow yellowish membrane then when the yellowish membrane is removed it changes into ulcer surrounded by edematous margins mainly on lining mucosa rare or keratinized mucosa so where there is lining mucous membrane rarely on the outer side of the ribs lips majorly on the inner side or the oral mucosa on the mucosa so now this was minor aphthous this was minor aphthous the clinical features now major aphthous in the picture there was 2 to 3 cm but they say more than 1 to 5 cm so we have more than 1 cm to 5 cm okay so appears on keratinized and non keratinized mucosa so we can also add here usually so that you can remember usually 2 to 3 cm because in more of the literature 2 to 3 cm is for major aphthous appears on keratinized unlike unlike minor unlike minor they do not appear on keratinized they rarely appear on keratinized but major aphthous appears on keratinized and non keratinized mucosa both can appear on keratinized and non keratinized both indurated base everted edges like a proper ulcer you know proper ulcer very painful and when it heals it leaves a scar so here we have irregular not round like not round it is not round like minor ulcer aphthous ulcer minor aphthous is not round absolutely round it is irregular not uniform it is more painful it has everted edges it will leave a scar after healing takes more than a month to heal oh my god you have to cover this right it's so painful more than takes more than a month to heal least common the third one is herpetiform ulcer which is least common here 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 dozens or hundreds of ulcer about 1 to 2 mm in size 1 to 2 mm mean 1 tenth of a centimeter so if 1 centimeter is minor aphthous so in that 1 tenth 1 tenth part of this will be 1 mm so 1 tenth to 2 tenth part of the minor ulcer is 1 to 2 mm so they are this means they are small pin point pin headed remember and they found in the groups and there are dozens and hundreds of these ulcers very painful and and surrounded by a erythematous halo erythematous shadow periphery peripheral erythema is found redness is found you see this is yellow area and then surrounded by redness yeah these redness help us to spot there is a problem these red area help us to spot there is a problem okay so okay so what was here this was important and this was important and the size was important and here this was differentiating this was differentiating part come on okay this was least common 
and dozens. Okay, perfect. Now we go to the next part. Forms of aphthous ulcer we already seen. Aphthous ulcer, minor, mildly painful, annoying, a few millimeters across, or like one centimeter rest less than one centimeter, but not one to two millimeter, not one tenth part, right? Heals within seven to day, two day, ten days of scarring, no scarring. Heals in ten to seven days. These minor aphthous ulcer heal in ten, seven to ten days, no scarring because scarring was in the major. Major were big enough, irregular enough to cause a scar after healing because this one was healed after 30 days. So let's see how to compare. These are mildly painful, minor ones. Minor are mild, mildly painful, major are more painful. They are few millimeters, less than one centimeter. They are more than one centimeter, usually two to three centimeters. They occur frequently. They reoccur usually, but because they are reoccurrent, reoccurring, so more, both, both of them are recurrent, recurrent. And then these are seven to two days healing, seven to 10 days healing. They are 10 to one month, one month, few days, one month. They do, will not cause scarring. They, will, they can cause scar and they can reoccur up to three to four times a year. Minor episodes that you're talking about. Then we have recurrent aphthous ulcer. When minus aphthous ulcer or major aphthous ulcer are occurring again and again, at least three to four times a year, at least three to four times or more than three to four times a year, it becomes recurrent aphthous ulcer. No matter it is minor, no matter it is major, it is occurring again and again, at least three to four times per year, at least then recurrent aphthous ulcer. And it may recur monthly and the, and the age is childhood to age 40. And then herpetiform, herpetiform ulcers, not herpetiform, herpetiform ulcers, not linked to herpes, even if there is name, not linked to herpes, typically affects males, typically, typically affect, oh, sorry, females, typically, typically affect females. Males are like this, yeah? Typically affect females, herpetiform ulcers, tiny, discrete, Discrete means you can distinguish they are individual, but in the group, in the clusters that coalesce into ulcerated patches. So what happens is, what do you mean by koalas? So they are, let's see, make them yellow. Make them yellow and okay. So we have yellow ulcers. It's too small, okay. We have yellow ulcers a lot. Yeah. Herpetiform clusters, multiple pinhead size. Then have a boundary, which is red. We have a boundary, which is red. Erythematous periphery, erythematous halo. And then these yellow fellows will coalesce, will get together, and will make an ulcer. Tiny, discrete, tiny, they are tiny, discrete. You can distinguish each other, mean discrete ulcers that coalesce and into an ulcerated patch. When they will get together and make a big ulcer, in short, they will make a patch of ulcer known as ulcerated patch, ulcerated patch. Heal in around 10 days, reoccur frequently. They can reoccur frequently. This is important part forms of aphthous ulcer that's how you remember okay then this is a differentiation between excuse me between aphthous stomatitis and herpetic ulcer not not herpetic form herpetic ulcers of aphthous ulcer we have here you can see Erythematous macule. Oh, let's just change it to blue. Okay. So, aphthous stomatitis or aphthous ulcer and herpetic ulcer. We have erythematous macule followed by a yellowish membrane covered. And when this yellow membrane removed, there will be an ulcer and there is a surrounding red area known as erythematous halo, erythematous shadow. But these herpetic ulcers 
are dome shaped dome shaped vesicles fluid containing so dome shaped vesicles are okay shallow discrete round also you need to remember you focus your brain okay location non keratinized mucosa epithelial are non keratinized but major ones they also on the non keratinized and keratinized whereas herpetic ulcer are on keratinized so it is attached to gingiva primary gingiva stomatitis anterior part of the mouth hard palate 2 to 3 mm also 2 to 3 mm but they are also small so because they look same and their size is same found in the same place anterior part so that's why it is important to distinguish aphthous ulcer from hsv primary perfect we have margin well defined localized but this is irregular so this is the difference what are the differences these are erythematous macules they are dome shaped they are have yellow round uniform ulcers they are shallow discrete round ulcers they contain some fluid location non keratinized only they are on keratinized only then size is almost same 3 to 10 and 2 to 3 but they are well defined uniform round they are not well defined and then they are usually single or fewer in number aphthous ulcer if not herpetic form ulcer and then they are few to several in numbers so, so this cannot differentiate so the place and the type of ulcer can differentiate and then another differentiation between herpes stomatitis cold sore <clears throat> caused by hsv herpes simplex virus those who have revised in their mouth previously when i said which was this good job herpes simplex type 1 oral ulcers cold sores anterior part of the mouth and then aphthous ulcer also anterior part of the mouth but more uniform singular discrete and then round well defined margin so, uh, surrounded by erythematous health canker sores the differentiation between cold sores and canker sores then causes of this is herpes simplex and for this is poor poor oral hygiene idiopathic local infection systemic disease allergic reaction food and then background both affects the inner cheeks gum inner lip tongue same area causes painful mouth ulcers white lesions inflammation redness of oral mucosa same diagnosis based on medical history you can differentiate based on physical exam bacterial or viral you can differentiate because this is a virus herpes stomatitis is a virus biopsy you can do biopsy you can do test pcr right and okay then treatment for these herpes stomatitis hsv1 we can give antiviral gels topical ointments oral mouth rinses mouth washes anti inflammatory meds local and chemical cauterization if they are big but aphthous aphthous ulcer the treatment will be because they are self limiting you have to take care of the wound don't develop into ulcer if ulcers are formed you use some uh, mild gels ointments to cover them and then everything will go well because they are self limited and they will heal on time then we have bashes disease i think this we will start okay bashes disease between the age of 20 to 40 years the diagnosis we we go for the oral manifestation oral recurrent ulcers followed by two of the following so if there is oral oral recurrent ulcers recurrent oral recurrent ulcers of oral cavity plus two of the four things these are the four things right yeah oh, sorry among these two of the four things any two either recurrent genital ulcers eye lesions or skin lesions or positive pathology test any two any two along with oral recurrent ulcers so we have recurrent oral ulcers followed by any of the two presentation any two among the four will make sure 
the disease is Bashes disease or the syndrome also known as Bashes syndrome, Bashes syndrome. And this is pathology test. And after that we have recurrent herpes simplex, the final one, okay? So